The Battle of Badr was one of the most magnificent victories of Islam. The list of who's who of Mecca had all passed away. From Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, Abu Jahl, and then Abu Lahab the week after Badr. All of the senior leadership of the Quraysh had basically disappeared. Allah Azza wa Jalla took care of them. And a few days after Badr, two of the Quraysh were sitting in the shadow of the Kaaba. One of them was the son of Umayyah ibn Khalaf, the one who tortured Bilal. Umayyah had died in the Battle of Badr. His son was Safwan ibn Umayyah. And the other was his cousin, Umayyah ibn Wahab, the nephew of Umayyah. So Safwan ibn Umayyah and Umayyah ibn Wahab are sitting in the shade of the Kaaba. And they began discussing how bitter life is. What's the point now? Because firstly realize as well, the Muslims, they had migrated from Mecca. Mecca is now half dead anyway. Half the city is gone anyway. Now after the battle of Badr, the senior leadership is gone as well. Safwan and Umayyah are talking to one another. And Safwan says, what's the point of life anymore? You know, my father's dead. My uncle's dead. Everybody's dead. What's the point? And his cousin Umayyah, utters the same sentiment. All of this, they say, is caused by one man. And that is the Prophet wasallam. And by the way, Umair's son, he had only one son. Umair's son had been captured and he was being held in Medina at that point in time. He has no family now, except two, three daughters. So Umair says, in a fit of anger, he says, you know what? If it weren't for the fact that I have daughters, they have to take care of, and I have some debts left, I would personally march into Medina and kill the one man who's responsible for all of this. So we're done with this affair. Safwan, his cousin, was the richer of the two. Safwan says, is that your only reason for not going? Don't worry. I swear by Allah under the shade of the Kaaba, your children are now my children and your debts, I will pay them off. You go do what you want to do. So Umair said, I will do it, but don't tell a soul. Keep it between us. The shade of the Kaaba, keep it between us. Umair went home, poisoned his sword, and marched immediately to Medina, telling nobody. He marches in, takes around 10 days for a soul rider to come. Nobody has preceded him from Mecca. He has marched on his own. And as soon as he enters Medina, he walks to the Masjid of the Prophet wasallam, and Umar ibn al-Khattab is sitting with the Ansar, telling them the stories of Badr and what happened and what they missed. Umar saw coming in the distance, Umair. And his face scowled. Umair's title in the Battle of Badr was Shaytanu Quraysh. So Umar radiallahu an sees him and he says, This is the Kalb of the Quraysh coming, the Shaytan of the Quraysh coming. He does not want any good. He jumps up and he holds him by the collar and he says, What are you doing here? So he says, I've come to speak to Muhammad. You have to let me come speak. I've come. I mean, how can you stop me from going to speak to him? So Umar radiallahu an drags him by the collar and takes him into the masjid. And he says to the Ansar, gather around him and guard him because this is not a man we can trust. And he has on him a sword on his side, a small dagger or sword on his side. So he is put in front of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet says, let him go, let, him go, let go of his collar. So he says, Umair, what has brought you here? He says to the Prophet ﷺ, the greeting of Jahiliyyah, an'am sabahan. That was the way they used to say, good morning. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has given us a greeting better than this. He has given us the greeting of the people of Jannah. It is the greeting of Salam. So Umair says, this is something you guys have just invented and I'm upon the culture of my people. I'm not in your salam and your Islam and whatnot. So then the Prophet said, Maja Abik, why have you come? He says, I have come to negotiate the ransom of my son. His son was a prisoner in the Battle of Badr. The Prophet ﷺ said, anything other than this? He said, no, just my son. So he said, what's up with the sword? So he goes, oh, the sword. What use was swords in the Battle of Badr? It was just, just there. The Prophet ﷺ said, no, that's not the reason you have come. Rather, you and Safwan ibn Umayyah were sitting under the shade of the Kaaba, discussing the loss of the Battle of Badr. And then he said, why doesn't somebody go and kill this man? And you offered to come and kill me. And he took charge of your children and your debts if you did this deed. He said to him the conversation in detail from beginning to end. Umair was dumbfounded. Firstly, Safan wouldn't have told anybody. Secondly, he has just come as a single rider straight from Mecca to Medina. No one could have preceded him. After some silence, he said, Ashhadu annaka la Rasulullah. Wallahi, no one could have told you this information other than Allah because I just came from that conversation. There's no way you would know. And the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, take care of our guest, teach him the religion, and gift him his son for free. Yalla, bismillah, go.
No need for any ransom. Otherwise, the ransom would have been very high. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to go back to Mecca and every single gathering and house that I used to curse your deen and you, I will now preach Islam. And when he had gone, Safwan ibn Umayyah had spread the news that, guys, I can't tell you what's happening, but you're going to hear some really good news from Medina soon. Okay? It's a secret, but I mean, I'm going to tell you. And so one day, a caravan came back from Medina and they said, you know, Safwan, you were right. A major news has happened. He goes, what happened? What happened? He said, Umayyad has embraced Islam. What? A complete shock. And so when Umayyad came back, he lived up to his promise of preaching Islam for a while. Ibn Ishaq mentions a number of people of Mecca converted, and then he migrated to Medina, lived his life in Medina. Then the conquest of Mecca takes place. Umayyad is in the army of the conquest of Mecca. He's coming back to Mecca with, from Medina, obviously. And he's missing his cousin, Safwan. They're very close friends, grew up together as his cousin. He rushes to Safwan's house in the conquest of Mecca, only to discover Safwan has fled. Because he knew he was a dead man, he had caused a lot of damage and he did not want to embrace Islam. Safwan had fled. Where did he go? He asked the family. He went to Juddah and he's going to run away to Abyssinia to live in exile, self-imposed exile. So Umayyad went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, my cousin Safwan, you know he is the Sayyid of our tribe. Please, I ask you to grant him your personal safety, your aman. So the Prophet said, I have given it to you, O Umayyad. Umayyad says, he's not going to believe me. The Prophet took his turban and said, here, show him this. His turban that he wore during the conquest of Mecca, he gave it to Umayyad. He said, go to Safwan and show him. This is a sign that he is under my safety. So Umair rushed to Juddah before the ship would depart. He caught up to Safwan. They haven't seen each other since, since Mecca. And Safwan sees him and says, get away from me, O enemy, O liar. You promised me this and that. You humiliated me. And Umair continued to say, Ya ibn Am, my cousin, embrace Islam. My cousin, our relative, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is A'azzul Arab, an Akramun Nas, an Ahlamun Nas. He's praising, he is the bravest and the most generous and the most forgiving. And then he says, don't you see, his iz is your iz. When he rises, you're gonna rise. Meaning, he's bringing in an element of jahiliya here. He's a Qurashi like us. And this is fine if you wanna use it for something like this, no problem. He's saying, he's our tribe, why would you run away? So then Safwan says, but I'm scared. After all that I've done, I'm scared. He said, the Prophet granted you a man. He goes, how do I know? He said, this is the turban. He took out the turban. He gave me the turban as the sign. So Safwan grudgingly came back with Umair and he held on to his hand, walked into the Kaaba. The Prophet is there. Safwan wanted to confirm. He said, Ya Muhammad, he's not a Muslim yet. Ya Muhammad, وسلم, I have heard from Umair that you have granted me a man. Is this true? The Prophet said, I have granted it to you. He says, I want two months. At least two months I want of safety. Let me think about my affairs, take care of my business, and then I'll see what I want to do. He's not a Muslim. The Prophet said, I'll give you four, not just two, I'll give you four. So for four months, Safwan remained in Mecca as a non-Muslim. And during this time frame, interacting with the Muslims there, the Prophet ﷺ is going to certain battles. Of them is the Battle of Hawazin from Mecca. They need to do other battles, you know, Ta'if and Hawazin. So Safwan being the rich man that he was, the Prophet ﷺ went to the house of Safwan and said, I need to borrow your armor and your bows and arrows. I need to take them for my military expedition. And Safwan says, are you taking it as a stealing or are you taking it as a loan? Our Prophet ﷺ said, no. It is a guaranteed loan. Meaning it's a lend, I'll take it from you and I guarantee that it's gonna come back to you and if anything is missing, it shall be replaced with something else. So the Prophet ﷺ took all of this and then he gave it back to him. The battle of Hawazin took place and then of course the famous battle towards Ta'if took place and that was when the Ghanima that was captured in Hunayn was the largest Ghanima in Islamic history as you're aware of that, the battle. And Safwan was still not a Muslim and it's still within the four months, right? And it was in the battle of Hunayn where the Prophet ﷺ chose around 10 or less than 10 of the elite of the Quraysh and he gave each one of them 100 camels from the Ghanima of Hunayn. Do you understand a hundred camels is literally more than a million dollars from our equivalent? That incident caused the Ansar to get irritated. Famous story. And they began grumbling amongst themselves. These evil people of the Quraysh, these Sanadid of the Quraysh go back with millions and we go back with nothing. 
right? They're grumbling because of the treatment of Safwan and a few of the elite. But Safwan is in that elite. The Prophet ﷺ heard this and he enters in upon the Ansar and he gives them a very moving lecture about the status of the Ansar. And he says, were it not for the fact that I was born a Qurashi, I would choose to be an Ansar if I could. And he says at the end of it, he says, are you not satisfied? that the Quraysh are going back with sheep and camels and you're going back with the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he said that, the entire tent was sobbing and in tears. And they said, Radina, we are, we are satisfied, we are satisfied. And he explained to them, he is doing this for Mu'allafati Qulubuhum. He is doing this so that these people, when they convert, they're gonna convert large tribes after them. And that's exactly what happened. Finally, Safwan converted. Now he realizes, you know what? This is not a man who has any ambition. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And subhanallah, the relationship between Umair and Safwan and how that friendship in Jahiliyyah that culminated in Jahiliyyah in a plot to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it to eventually cause reconciliation and cause the other one to become a source of safety and bring him the same one that was sent to kill the Prophet sallallahu brought his cousin back in safety to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the both of them died sahaba and in fact one of them died a shaheed fighting that is Umayr he died a shaheed later on may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the righteous and be allow us to be amongst the companions on the day of judgment